Now, I just finished watching Antonio Pierce's presser for today, and I have a few things that we really need to touch on. And then also, I just read a report that has us trading some very important players away from the Raiders. And apparently this was leaked by the Raiders to help generate some interest and get those phone calls going. All of that and more on today's episode of the Raider D podcast. All right, Raider Nation, let's get right into Antonio Pierce's presser. And we're going to do a reaction live to that. So let's just jump into that right now. Here we go. Antonio, you know how this works. Uh, when when a part of the game is struggling, people point fingers at the play caller. You know, where where are you on on, on that with Luke Getze and, and the play calling and Luke being moving forward? Yeah, I think it, it has to get better. You know, there's been a lot of opportunities for us to score points and make opportunities, and yeah, that's on the play caller. But then also, like I told our staff and I told our players, is all of us. It ain't. It's not. It's easy to sit here and just point the finger at Luke or myself, but you know, you look at O line play, quarterbacks, the running backs, you know, turnovers, missed uh, blocks, missed executions on plays, alignments, the details. All those things had to get cleaned up. Okay, so he starts out pretty good. Like he is saying, yes, it is on the play caller, but it's on all of us. Um, but then he kind of, you know, starts putting it back on the players. And this is something that he's done multiple times. Now, yes, you got to hold your players accountable. But who's responsible for getting the players to be ready for each and every single week? That's the head coach and the coaching staff. So it, he's kind of playing both sides of the fence here. Let's let's listen some more because it's gonna it's gonna get interesting. Um, so yeah, it does start with the coordinator. He's got to be the one that takes the fall for that and take. Did you hear that? It starts with the coordinator. He's the one that's got to take the fall for that. Now, let's keep this in mind as the season progresses and we continue to uh, cough up these ridiculous losses. Who is he going to start pointing the finger at? Because he's laying the groundwork right now because a lot of fingers are being pointed at him. And at this point right now, Antonio Pierce has to be thinking self-preservation, preserving his own job and trying to make sure that he's here next year. Because right now, the rumors going on in the in the Raiders building is that he won't be here next year, that they're already looking for his replacement as well as Luke Getze's. So if he can start separating himself from Luke Getze, I mean, I, I don't blame him. It, again, it's self-preservation. He's trying to, to preserve his job. But listen to this. It uh, gets most of the blame, but it is collective. That, are you comfortable moving forward with him at just, just remaining as a play caller? Now, look, he says yes, hesitates a little bit. We can read a lot of stuff into that, but I'm not going to get into reading into his hesitation there. So what does he do when he's addressed with this question? Because he's been addressed with it a couple of times. First, he says, yeah, it's easy to point fingers at Luke Getze or even me, but it's all of us. And then he starts putting the blame on the players. But then he follows that up by saying, Yes, the play caller, i.e. Luke Getze, is the one that's going to take all the blame, and rightly so. And then he comes and says he's still comfortable with Luke Getze being the play caller. So for me, I, I, I'm a little bit conflicted, but it seems like he's throwing Luke Getze under the bus and he's, he's laying the groundwork for basically to blame this on Luke Getze and the players. It's not him. It's not his fault. It's the play caller. And he is specifically saying it's the play caller separating himself because Antonio Pierce doesn't play, doesn't call any plays. He has no, basically no say in what happens with the offense or the defense. He is literally a spectator out there on the field. And then he's just the one that gets up and does these press conferences. If you look at other head coaches who are very successful, even if they're not the one playing uh, 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 calling the plays, they at least have a play sheet in front of them. And I've, I've talked about this before. And now he is very clearly delineating that he is not the play caller and the play caller is the one that takes all of the blame. So there's that. That's, that's Antonio Pierce's. And he did also go on. He was asked about Michael Mayer. I just want to touch on that a little bit because it has been a mystery of what's going on with Michael Mayer. Is he coming back? Is he not coming back? In this press conference, and I don't know where it is right here, so I'm not going to waste time with it. But in this press conference, he did say, 
that uh, he is almost back. No idea what that's supposed to mean. Did he have an injury, a not an injury? Is he is he having a mental breakdown? Is he a drug addict? Is he an alcoholic? What is going on with Michael Mayer? We have no idea. But all we know is he's close to coming back, whatever that's supposed to mean. Remember, he was supposed to be close to coming back several weeks ago. Still is not back. We'll, we'll just have to see what's happening with that. Now, I also want to uh, address something else uh, that is going on with the Raiders right now, and that is in the way that this works and why guys like Pelissero, Gracio, uh, Rappaport, and, and even myself, I occasionally get some information, is the Raiders PR team will leak stuff out intentionally. And we've seen that with Devontae Adams, how uh, there was a leaked information that Devontae Adams wouldn't be with the team for very long. Antonio Pierce likes the tweet, and then it starts this whole uh, fireball of Devontae Adams being traded to the Jets, which, funny enough, I read today that now he may end up getting traded to the Saints. Uh, I, who knows what's going on with this guy? He is playing musical chairs, but apparently he's not happy in New York now either, according to some reports that are out there. Whether they're true or not, I don't know. Now, this, this article is from Dan Graciano, and Dan Graciano is one of those NFL insiders like uh, Ian Rappaport and others. And so usually when he puts out these kinds of articles, uh, it's because the PR team has promoted something, but they don't want to let the agent of the players know what's going on because they're trying to field calls. If you start making calls back and forth and you're initiating it, then that can get back to the agents and then it just causes a problem. So they leak these reports out to guys like Graciano. He then goes and publishes it because he's got a big platform. He gets a lot of eyeballs and then teams will start calling in and making trade offers for these particular individuals. And I think it's really um, a bit disturbing about one of them. The The other two I'm not upset about, but one of them I, I'm not happy with being on this list. And I hope that this does not come to fruition. And no, it is not Aiden O'Connell. But in this article, and it's in several different places, um, it, this one is the bleacher report that published it here, but it's, it's published in several places. And that is, uh, trade rumors, Raiders eyed possible seller by teams after Devonte Adams deal. And it goes on to say some NFL teams are speculating the Las Vegas Raiders could decide to sell at, at at the trade deadline after dealing star wide out Devontae Adams to the New York Jets in exchange for a conditional third round pick, according to ESPN's Dan Graziano. Graziano named wide receiver Jacoby Myers, guard Cody Whitehair, and defensive tackle John Jenkins as possible trade candidates. Graciano noted that he does not believe the Raiders plan to deal defensive star Max Crosby after benching QB one Gardner Minshew in favor of Aiden O'Connell amid the team's two and four start to the season. Raiders general manager Tom Telesco could be looking at amassing draft capital in order to select a new starting quarterback in 2025. Uh, well, my insider sources have already told me that that is actually the plan and that is what they are doing 100%. Okay, continuing to get a larger target share uh, in Adams' absence could potentially draw in more suitors for Myers, who has one year remaining on his contract after this season and could be a solid option for a contending team in need of depth behind an established wide receiver one. Whitehair is playing on an, playing on an expiring contract, as is Jenkins, making their deals both potential rentals at the deadline. Crosby could also potentially be viewed as a rental given that his contract has a potential out due to not being guaranteed after 2024, although the Raiders would take on more than $23 million in dead cap for the next two seasons to move him, according to Spot Track. So let's jump into this. <clears throat> First and foremost, I do not believe whatsoever that Max Crosby will be going anywhere. Um, and I also... Am very skeptical at Jacoby Myers being taken off the team simply because of this. Uh, Jacoby Myers has another year on his contract. He's very inexpensive, and he is an absolute 
quiet as kept baller out there on the field. So I I would hate to see the Raiders get rid of him, especially when you're only going to get a fourth round draft pick and then you have to give up next year's sixth round draft pick in exchange for him, which is what the proposed deal would be. I don't like that. He We got this guy all of next year. We're going to have an unestablished rookie quarterback coming in next year. You need a good, solid set of hands. And Jacoby Myers is that. He is a Swiss Army knife of wide receivers. He's our own version of Debo Samuel. You don't give him up for a fourth-round draft pick. That would be absolute highway robbery. So uh, I 100% am against that, and I don't think it's going to happen. I hope it's not going to happen. I hope Tom Telesco doesn't do that unless... You guys watched my video earlier about DK Metcalf coming to the Raiders because according to some reports, the Raiders have made calls to the Seattle Seahawks in a potential trade to bring DK Metcalf here to the Raiders. 